With Manhattan reopening, what does the future look like for Aggieville businesses and traditions? And K-State Student Government Association is about to have a new student body president. What both candidates are planning to do before the election. That and more later in the show. After snow and cold temperatures made people dread going outside two weeks ago, check out this temperature in the 70s today. Looks like spring might be here a bit early. I'll have more on your forecast later in the show. This is KKSULD, broadcasting in high definition from Kansas State University, covering Manhattan, Riley County, and the Flint Hills. You're watching Channel 8 News. Good morning, and welcome to Channel 8 News. I'm Daisy Hagedorn. On today's show, information on K-State's graduation plans this May, as well as the, a look into K-State basketball as they prepare for March Madness. But first, the Riley County Health Department recently lifted the COVID-19 restrictions, impacting the Aggieville Bar District in a major way. Reporter Bailey Matthews has more on the story. On March 1st, the Riley County Health Department said it will retract all COVID-19 restrictions in the area except a mask mandate. Riley County Health Officer Julie Gibbs announced the new health order, Health Order Number 20. I talked to Mills Vick, the manager at 785, to see what will change. Allowing bars in Aggieville to stay open until 2 a.m., our original times, we get to raise our capacities a little bit. Dance floors can reopen and people are free to wander about the cabin with their masks on, though. And then when you sit down, you can't have your mask. You can take it off, of course. The order eliminates the previous restrictions on bars where they had to close at midnight, had limited capacity, and everyone had to be seated. The new order also removes the mass gathering limit of 50 people. Masks are also not required in outdoor public spaces if a distance of six feet can be maintained, which is why I'm allowed to not have my mask on right now. Vic also explained what the new mandate means for 785's business. Higher capacity means that our bartenders, not only are we going to be able to hire a few more staff members, but those that we already have an employed are going to get more shifts and more shifts mean more money. We normally have one, maybe two bartenders behind a bar, but when our capacity starts being double what it was, we're going to be able to have three on each side. This will be the first weekend that Aggieville bars will see a big increase in business. In Manhattan, I'm Bailey Matthews, Channel 8 News. This weekend will be Aggieville's first test to see if COVID-19 cases increase and if businesses thrive with extended hours and less restrictions. With St. Patrick's Day on the horizon comes Manhattan's biggest unofficial holiday, Fake Patty's Day. Both the event being canceled this year due to the COVID-19 pandemic, questions arose that putting on Fake Patty's Day would be worth it anymore. The decision, the Aggieville Business Association will not coordinate or organize the event going forward. Channel 8 reporter Cameron Bradley has a story. Fake Paddy's Day is a cherished day for college students in Manhattan, but due to the lack of benefits to Aggieville, as well as a whole other list of problems, the unofficial holiday has lost its luster with the Aggieville Business Association. We talked to the, uh, uh, the, the, the businesses who benefit, the bars, the general consensus, not a, not a unanimous consensus, but the general consensus is, is this is, it's probably time just to let this thing move on. One person who understands and supports the change is Manhattan Mayor Wynn Butler. Uh, a number of the groups have changed the house parties. That cuts into profits for the bars. And so I think they've come to the conclusion that the black eye of fake Patty's Day, all the bad things that come out of it, uh, just supersede any money that they could make. For the Riley County Police Department, Fake Paddy's Day is normally the busiest day of the year, having to bring in police from surrounding counties. I, I think there's a little sigh of relief. It's a hard time for uh, the police officers. We're still aware um, that, you know, house parties are going to go on and, and, you know, that's fine as long as they're doing it lawfully and, and safely. On a typical Fake Paddy's Day, the entire stretch of Morrow Street through Aggieville is completely shut down. And while the Aggieville Business District houses approximately 100 businesses, only a handful of those benefit from Fake Paddy's Day. So while some bars thrive, other businesses are negatively impacted. One business that still plans on having a fake Patty's Day celebration is Johnny Cause, as owner Brett Allred said that he plans on celebrating in August or when it is safe to do so. For the ABA, they still plan on having many events to attract college students and more throughout the year. In Manhattan, I'm Cameron Bradley, Channel 8 News.
going forward with their St. Patrick's Day celebration on the 13th, which will feature races and a parade in an attempt to attract the community to Aggieville. Like other liquor stores, the library experienced an increase in sales during the COVID-19 pandemic. In order to prevent the spread of COVID, many have decided to enjoy a drink in the comfort of their own home as opposed to going out to the bars. John Richardson, owner of the library, felt thankful that his business did not have to close and explains why he believes there was a spike in sales. Starting on March 1st, Riley County removed. I think it was just uh, people are going to drink no matter what. I don't think there was a overall increase in consumption, but it just shifted from bars and restaurants to people doing it at home. For several weeks now, the rate of local COVID-19 spread had trended downwards in Riley County, as have hospitalization rates and other key indicators that show how the community is faring in its fight against COVID-19. Our MHK All Day reporter team has the latest on how that affects local COVID-19 prevention measures and how businesses are adjusting to the ongoing pandemic. Starting on March 1st, Riley County removed most of its local COVID-19 restrictions. That means limits on gathering sizes, event registration forms, and other local rules have been revoked. The local mask requirement in public spaces, which was instituted in November, is still in place, and health officials still expect social distancing when possible. When making the decision to reverse most of the prevention requirements, the Riley County Health Department focused on three main criteria, a low positivity rate, few hospitalizations, and a limited number of ongoing outbreaks. Local health officer Julie Gibbs said data is the driving force behind making decisions about public health orders. She says the numbers in Riley County are encouraging. With all of the restrictions that we had in place with order number 19, it didn't make sense to continue with those restrictions based on the data that we're seeing. I think it was past time that we removed some of those restrictions. K-State, on the other hand, doesn't plan to reverse its on-campus COVID-19 restrictions just yet. The university has a phased approach to reopening with set requirements that must be met before progression to the next phase can begin. To move out of phase three and into the restriction phase out period, there needs to be access to effective therapeutic treatments for COVID-19, a prolonged period of declines and deaths, hospitalizations and case clusters must also be low. Lafine Medical Director Dr. Kyle Gorl says those thresholds have been met, but one area in particular is still not tracking well enough. The main one, the vaccine part, we're still not um, at a place where we just have widespread vaccine availability. It's not all bad news, Dr. Gorl said. He expects to reach phase out in time for the fall 2021 semester. K-State tentatively announced last week that it plans to phase out on-campus COVID-19 restrictions starting on August 1st. If we stay on the same trajectory, um, this is definitely a breath of fresh air. And so, uh, and it leaves us feeling pretty hopeful for the fall semester that things are going to look at a lot more like normal than they look like in the 2021 year. Though Gibbs says changes in local spread could require the dissolved rules or other restrictions to be instituted, she's hopeful. I hope it's the beginning of the end, but you just never can tell. Um, there's always something, something on the horizon. So again, we just have to keep watching out for that. From Manhattan, I'm Kaylee McLaughlin for MHK All Day. As is the case across the globe, COVID-19 restrictions have had an impact on local businesses in the greater Manhattan area. MHK Love, a campaign put together by business owners to support the Manhattan community by spreading the importance of shopping locally. Since COVID-19, businesses in the Manhattan community have suffered leaving many locally owned businesses to shut their doors. The MHK Love campaign was created to keep hope alive by supporting local business and the community through shopping at Manhattan owned businesses. Vivian Uccello, the City of Manhattan Public Information Officer, has shared her thoughts with MHK All Day reporters on how the coronavirus has made an impact on locally owned businesses. I think we all have a stronger sense of community and with the idea that, no, we can't face these kinds of problems alone and we do need to reach out to each other and people have stepped up to help. Last year's commencement at K-State was canceled due to COVID-19. We'll tell you what this year's graduates can expect and what the rest of the student body needs to know before they elect the next SGA president.
He'll take it down on Jacobson. Off to McGurl. Layup. Yes! Fielded at the 48. Here's Brooks to the 25 20. He's going to score! Wildcat touchdown! Please direct your attention to the pride of Wildcat land, the Kansas State University Marching Band. A great environment it is here at Bill Snyder Family Stadium. It's time for the Wabash Cannonball. This crowd, this is energetic. This is perfect. This atmosphere, it's just different. The one, the only, the pride of Wildcat land, the Kansas State University Marching Band. What the radio station has done for me, it has allowed me to use my public speaking capabilities and provide it into a entertaining way. I would say the fact that most of the classes I've taken have not just been fluff, like they feel like they've actually prepared me for the world. If all things go well, working there might have gotten me a job. Upon arrival, I'm like, oh, these people love football. Like, these people are nuts about Kansas State. And Saturday morning, I mean, swarms of people outside of the stadium tell game. We come in, it's about 45 minutes before game time. The stadium's packed. And I'm like, this is the atmosphere. Whenever I dream of playing college football, this is exactly what I see. The chants, the music, everything. And just throughout the entire game, I mean, it was just a place I knew I had to be. The pandemic has been affecting us for almost a year now. Several events across the world have been delayed or canceled, causing people to miss their favorite tradition or force businesses to close. Now with the COVID-19 vaccine, Kansas State seniors will get, their, get to live their dreams by turning their tassels and throwing their hats. K-State's events coordinator Holly Gerke says the events office has been working tirelessly to plan a successful spring 2021 graduation. We actually will be using the Bill Snyder Family Football Stadium for all of our Manhattan-based commencement ceremonies. We are inviting any graduate of the year 2020 back for the spring ceremonies. Um, a full schedule can be found on the graduation website, how that's broken down by academic colleges. Um, so every academic college will have a separate ceremony, um, depending on how many graduates are, are walking with them. Kansas State's graduation ceremonies will be held the weekend of May 14th, 15th, and the 16th. Holly says there is no set plan for inclement weather, but they are determined to have a ceremony for all 2020 and 2021 graduates. Students and families can be updated at K-State's graduation website at kstate.edu backslash graduation. After a unique academic year, one student body president will soon pass the torch to the next. Two candidates with previous SGA experience have received the majority of the votes in the primary election, as the general election is fast approaching. Jacob Hall has more. Vedant Kulkarni and Michael Dow both look back on fond K-State memories as they spend their days campaigning to be the next student body president. My time at K-State has meant so much to me. Um, it helped me gain leadership skills and skills that are so necessary uh, uh, for our students to have. To me, K-State is has meant to me um, that like I'm connected to a family and, and a community that cares uh, so deeply. After deciding to run, each candidate soon realized that the team that surrounded them would be significant factors in their campaigns. When it comes to like campaign staff, um, we really tried to find um, individuals who were very passionate about what they did. A lot of uh, diversity of experience in our team, I would say. And it's a really, I'm proud to be part of this amazing team. Dowd and Cool Carney both have different platforms that they are utilizing during their campaigns, but one core value in each is advocating for students. This is something they both find most rewarding about working with SGA. The most rewarding part for me is to have those moments where you connect with a student and realize that um, the work that you've done and the late nights that you've spent um, has actually made a difference. Seeing you, the ability to help students and seeing what uh, impact you can make on campus has been the true fruitful experience of being in SGA. 
The Dowd campaign edged out Kulkarni's in the primaries by 516 votes. However, both candidates see opportunities for improvement and will campaign around campus until the general election on March 9th and 10th. In Manhattan, Jacob Hall, Channel 8 News. On Friday in the New Morris Family Multicultural Student Center, there were messages written on gallery walls alluding to white nationalism. Later that afternoon, administration released a statement condemning the messages written. Diversity and Multicultural Student Affairs organized a dialogue for students to voice their concerns. Tremaine Lindsay, Director of Diversity and Multicultural Student Life, says this incident will not change his plans in making all students at the university feel welcome. I can speak directly to what my plans are, again, being responsible for the center, being um, here to support students from marginalized communities. I want to be able to continue to do everything that I can to make sure that those students feel supported and that they feel that they belong here at the university. Later on in the show, even through a tough year, K-State basketball still has postseason hopes. And there are three steps to take to prepare for severe weather. We'll tell you about those when we come back from the break. Take it down on Jacobson. Off to McGurl. Lay up. Yes. Fielded at the 48. Here's Brooks to the 25 20. He's going to score. Wildcat touchdown. He crushes it. Please direct your attention to the pride of Wildcat land, the Kansas State University Marching Band. A great environment it is here at Bill Snyder Family Stadium. It's time for the Wabash Cannonball. This crowd, this is energetic. This is perfect. This atmosphere, it's just different. The one, the only, the pride of Wildcat land, the Kansas State University Marching Band. What the radio station has done for me, it has allowed me to use my public speaking capabilities and provide it into a entertaining way. I would say the fact that most of the classes I've taken have not just been fluff, like they feel like they've actually prepared me for the world. If all things go well, working there might have gotten me a job. Upon arrival, I'm like, oh, these people love football. Like, these people are nuts about Kansas State. And Saturday morning, I mean, swarms of people outside of the stadium tell game. We come in, it's about 45 minutes before game time. The stadium's packed. And I'm like, this is the atmosphere. Whenever I dream of playing college football, this is exactly what I see. The chants, the music, everything. And just throughout the entire game, I mean, it was just a place I knew I had to be. As the seasons begin to change from winter to spring, severe weather will be a hot topic. The National Weather Service has dedicated this week as Severe Weather Preparedness Week in Kansas, with each day being dedicated to a certain type of severe weather. David Hogg, Emergency Management Coordinator at Kansas State, says preparedness is important for everyone in the area. Thanks, Stacy. Many people may have gotten a confusing notification on their phone on Tuesday morning, somewhat like this. The notification said that there was a tornado warning in the area. This was in fact just a test from the National Weather Service that mistakenly went out as an actual alert. This was caused by a malfunction within their new software that they were testing out on Tuesday. Instead of sending out a message saying that the notification was just a test, it sent out an actual tornado warning. According to David Hogg, the National Weather Service has identified and fixed the problem for the next time a test is issued. This test sent out as a warning is a good reminder that people need to be aware of what the weather will be like during the day. So here are a few tips. First, know your forecast. Check your phone, your TV, or even the internet to find out what the weather is going to be like that day or week. Second, know, you are going to, know how you are going to receive your warnings. Will you be getting alerts on your phone when severe weather strikes? Ask yourself, do you have a way of getting warnings for severe weather? And third, know where you're going to go and take action. A good plan for when severe weather strikes could end up saving your life. Going back to our first tip, the forecast. Here's our national forecast. Looking at the East Coast, we got 44 degrees up there in New York as that cold front pushes up there, but then look down at Florida, 83 degrees. I wish I was down there. 
70 degrees down in Texas. Now, you know, they had a lot of snow the, a couple weeks ago, so it's really nice to see that they have 70 degrees down there. And then 72 up in Kansas, a little bit warmer up there. Looking at the West Coast in California, 65 degrees. Pretty nice across the map, except for in New York. Now looking at Kansas, we have a warm front moving from the southwest up to the northeast. So we're going to have a little bit more warmer weather up in the eastern portion of Kansas. 72 degrees in Manhattan, 72 degrees in Salina, 60 degrees pretty much everywhere else across Kansas. So pretty nice across the day here in the state of Kansas. Now looking at your 24 hour forecast, this evening, 64 degrees and sunny, pretty nice after the 72 degree weather that we had. Sunrise for tomorrow, 35 degrees, gonna be cold, might have to, might have to start scraping your car a little bit, possibly 35 degrees though, not that bad. And then tomorrow, 68 degrees, Beautiful for a Friday, really gonna put you into the weekend with a pretty happy mood. Now looking at our five day forecast, on Thursday, 72 degrees today, gonna be beautiful today. 61 degrees tomorrow on Friday, gonna love this weekend. 67 degrees on Saturday, gotta get out there and just get, get out there and see the sun, get out there and just enjoy the warm weather this weekend. 69 degrees on Sunday, and then start off your week 72 degrees on Monday. Beautiful way to start off your week. That's all for me with weather. Back to you at the desk, Daisy. Thanks, Cameron. Up next, how K-State baseball started off their homestand and what awaits the Batcats this weekend. Plus, a look into K-State women's basketball at clash against 20th ranked West Virginia last night. On Jacobson, off to McGurl, layup, yes! To the 25-20, he's going to score! Wildcat touchdown! He it! Please direct your attention to the pride of Wildcat land, the Kansas State University Marching Band. A great environment it is here at Bill Snyder Family Stadium. It's time for the Wabash Cannonball! This is energetic. This is perfect. This atmosphere, it's just different. The one, the only, the pride of Wildcat land, the Kansas State University Marching Band. What the radio station has done for me, it has allowed me to use my public speaking capabilities and provide it into a entertaining way. I would say the fact that most of the classes I've taken have not just been fluff, like they feel like they've actually prepared me for the world. If all things go well, working there might have got me a job. Upon arrival, I'm like, oh, these people love football. Like, these people are nuts about Kansas State. And Saturday morning, I mean, swarms of people outside of the stadium tailgate. We come in, it's about 45 minutes before game time. The stadium's packed. And I'm like, this is the atmosphere. Whenever I dream of playing college football, this is exactly what I see. The chants, the music, everything. And just throughout the entire game, I mean, it was just a place I knew I had to be. Sports anchor Madeline Emerson has the latest on K-State sports. Maddie? Stacy, K-State baseball team went head-to-head -head with Western Michigan last weekend. After securing a 2-1 victory at Toynton Family Stadium on Sunday, the Cats completed a three-game series sweep of the Broncos. The Wildcats improved their record to 4-2 on the young season. The team will continue their eight-game homestand with a three-game series against Eastern Illinois beginning Friday at 3 p.m. Fourth, K-State men's basketball will be playing a makeup game against Iowa State, making this the last regular season game before the conference. Tournament, begin, tournament begins, the Wildcats are currently ninth in the Big 12 standings, while the Cyclones are in last. Freshman center Davian Bradford still believes this team has something to prove. We're just going to stay, keep with our poise and keep our heads level and like keep improving and keep getting better. I mean, that's all we can do, and that's our that's that we got to control the control controllable. And 
K-State women's basketball scraped by TCU with a win Monday night in overtime by three points. Trumping the Horned Frog 79-76 behind 31 points from junior Chrissy Carr before having a comeback attempt fall just short in a loss against 20th ranked West Virginia 72-64 last night. Sophomore Aoka Lee has had 55 points over the last two games, including a double-double last night. That's all for sports. Back to you, Daisy. Coming up, warm spring weather is on the horizon. Cameron will give us a look into the weekend with one final look at the weather. He'll take it down on Jacobson. Off to McGurl. Lay up. Yes! to the 25-20, he's going to score! Wildcat touchdown! He crushes it! Please direct your attention to the pride of Wildcat land, the Kansas State University Marching Band. A great environment it is here at Bill Snyder Family Stadium. It's time for the Wabash Cannonball! This is energetic. This is perfect. This atmosphere, it's just different. The one, the only, the pride of Wildcat land, the Kansas State University Marching Band. What the radio station has done for me, it has allowed me to use my public speaking capabilities and provide it into a entertaining way. I would say the fact that most of the classes I've taken have not just been fluff, like they feel like they've actually prepared me for the world. If all things go well, working there might have gotten me a job. Upon arrival, I'm like, oh, these people love football. Like, these people are nuts about Kansas State. And Saturday morning, I mean, swarms of people outside of the stadium tell game. We come in, it's about 45 minutes before game time. The stadium's packed. And I'm like, this is the atmosphere. Whenever I dream of playing college football, this is exactly what I see. The chants, the music, everything. And just throughout the entire game, I mean, it was just a place I knew I had to be. We go to Cameron Bradley, who has the weekend forecast. Cameron? Thanks, Stacy. Like I said earlier in the show, got to get outside, enjoy this weather. 60 degrees across the board this weekend, 61 on Friday, 67 on Saturday, 69 on Sunday. Heard the cats have a weekend series at Toynton. Maybe we want to go out there, catch some baseball. Back to you at the desk, Stacy. Thanks, Cameron. On next week's show, we will tell you about Women's History Month and how the vital role of women in American history is being observed. Well. This wraps up this week's show. We appreciate you tuning in, and we hope to see you again next week. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Peace and love, Manhattan. This is Channel 8 News.